All right, and we're going to move into a little more conceptual ideas that are even harder to conceptualize. The math is easier, but the concepts are harder. So energy. We're going to use energy. Talk about what energy is and how we can use energy and how energy is transformed. Relate how is that related to work? Then you have kinetic energy and then the con law of conservation of energy. And how you can use these principles, these ideas to solve problems. You're going to find that some of the problems we solved earlier are easier to solve using energy. But energy is not a tangible thing. It's a concept. It's an idea that we have to wrap our heads around. Different forms. Energy, by definition, is the capacity to do work. Work we will define later. What is work? It's not exactly as we think it is. But it's the capacity to do work. There are many things that we use energy that are not necessarily the same thing. Like light and heat. They don't appear to be the same thing, but if we use energy, the idea of energy, they're together. Raising an object up, lifting something up. Motion. Electricity, radioactivity. Energy is the thing that ties those things together. We can use this concept of energy to, when we're solving any problem that deals with all of these things and many others. And so this idea makes it, you know, so when you're solving problems in physics, one thing to start doing now that we've got more than one idea under our belt is to start thinking about how things are tied together. How is what I'm learning right now help me understand what I learned before, and when I move forward, how is it going to help me understand, you know, so when we get to the next material, think back. Always, you know, there is a reason we go through things in the order we do, and they are building on one another. Hey, there are different forms of energy. We have kinetic energy. That's the energy of motion. If something is moving, it has kinetic energy. There is gravitational potential energy. Where it is matters. What it's doing is kinetic. Where it is actually has energy, gives it a, a, some energy. You have elastic or spring energy. If I take a bow and I stretch it back, it takes energy to do that, but we know there's energy stored in that bow, the spring energy. We have thermal energy. What is thermal energy? That's Thermal en energy at its most fundamental level is looking down at the molecular motion. The more thermal energy I have, the more molecular motion I have at the molecule level. The faster things are moving, the more kinetic energy individual molecules have. You have chemical energy. This is due to the molecular bond, right? Two molecules bonded together. There's a certain amount of energy. If I break that bond apart, I can release that energy. That's chemical energy. Nuclear energy is in the energy of, of taking, if we think about it, in, in physics 132 we'll learn about electricity, but if I take two protons, most of you know this because you've taken chemistry, two positive protons, do they want to come together? No, there's a, there's a repulsive force, right? But in a nucleus, what do you have? You have two protons that are effectively right on top of each other. There must be some kind of energy holding those things together. They wouldn't normally be there. That's what nuclear, that's the energy stored there. There's some energy, the strong nuclear force, holding those two things together. If we break that bond, we can release that energy. If we're able to release it, there's a large amount of energy stored there. So when we talk about energy, this is, you know, there's a lot of different forms of energy. Again, when we step into this room, we're going to be in a physics lab. We're not going to deal with every possible area of energy. But remember, the ideas are still going to be in play. Hey, right. one way to think about energy is think about it like money. It's nature's money. If I have money, if I have income, I have a job. You know, I have a job here. Some of you have jobs. That's your income. You get some cash. You put it into 
two, one of two forms. You either put it into liquid assets, that would be cash, could be a checking account, could be you know, money on a prepaid debit card, that kind of stuff. That's liquid assets are things that you can get out immediately, right? You don't have to do anything to get access to that, to that money. You just take it out of your wallet and spend it. Then you have your saved assets. That would be stocks and bonds, pennies in a jar. Uh, pennies in a jar, we think they're liquid, but they're really not liquid assets in our world today, right? If you had 100,000 pennies in your jar, or 200,000 pennies in your jar, or a million dollars worth of pennies, that would be an extremely large amount of pennies. You're not going to go to Walmart, or, okay, if you got a million dollars worth of pennies, you're not going to Walmart, you're going to go to the Gucci store. But do you think Gucci store is going to let you come in and buy that $100,000 thing? I don't know what's worth $100,000 in Gucci, but actually the little label says Gucci. They put $90,000 on that and $10,000 for the thing. <laughs> but you know what I mean. They're not going to take that money from you. you know, you're going to bring in like a truckload of pennies here. You're like, it's not, that's not liquid assets. Now, if you go to the dime store and you're going to buy a couple dollar store things and maybe you bring in a couple hundred pennies with you. But even then, you have to do some work, right? You have to count out those pennies. So it's really not a liquid asset. Now, so I have this income. What am I doing? I'm putting my money into my, my wealth, how much wealth I have. I keep some as liquid assets. I keep some as saved assets. If I want to convert... You know, let's say I have $100,000 in my bank account because I sold my house. I have some cash sitting in my savings account. I can do one of two things. I can blow that $100,000 nickel and dime it away because it's like money burning a hole in my pocket. Because I don't want to waste that. I want to be able to buy a house a year from now. What do I do? I can put that money into a saved asset. I can actually put it into bonds. Buy a term deposit for, you know, a 90-day term deposit. So I've converted that cash into a saved asset, but I have not changed my wealth, right? I have not changed the amount of money I have. My wealth is determined by basically wealth equals liquid assets plus my saved assets at its most fundamental level. So if I convert saved assets into cash or cash into saved assets, I haven't changed the amount of wealth I have. Now, but if I take money out, and I pay my Comcast bill, it seems to grow every month. Or I buy, I pay my Verizon bill, which seems to also grow every month. Just wait till you have kids. I used to pay $50 a month for a phone bill. I used to whine and complain about $50 a month phone bill. I just wrote out a check yesterday for a phone bill, for my Verizon phone bill, where we have five, four smartphones, and my youngest one has a non-smartphone. But somehow she's figured out how to use it like a smartphone. And we have this shared data plan, you know, that Verizon offers. And I got a daughter in college right now, and so and she's got a nicest, she's got an iPhone that seems to just consume large amounts of data. My son has a, a very nice razor something droid thing that he seems to consume large amounts of data, so we have to buy more data than I would like to buy. 330 bucks. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. That's a loss of wealth. <laughs> That's not... <laughs> That's not pennies going out the door. That's real money going out the door. $333.61 for a phone. But they're smartphones, <laughs> right? It was smart for Verizon because they just made 330 bucks off me versus like 10 bucks. And what does it cost them? Nothing, but it's beside the point. I'll get off my soapbox. But that's an expenditure. You have lost wealth by spending out. 
And so energy is very much the same. We have this transformations. I can transform from one form of you know, cash to savings, and that doesn't change my wealth. But if I have a transfer in or a transfer out, that changes how much wealth I have. Seems like the out is more than the in when it comes to wealth. But money comes in from my paycheck that increases for a day. And then at the end of the day, I write out all the checks that are due, and now I'm down in wealth. But if, as long as I keep it inside there, we're good. Energy is very much the same way. We have our system. Back here, our system was, you know, me and my wealth. With, a, in a, with energy, we have our system. We define our system to be whatever we want. Sometimes the system is going to be just a simple thing. Sometimes the system is going to involve two things, a car on a hill. The system is the car and the hill. Sometimes the system will be the car. You have to think about this. So this is more, it's not, it, you know, again, we're moving into this idea where it's no longer just compare and, and move things over. We have to think about what is my system. Inside the system, I can transfer energy around. So inside my system, energy can go from kinetic to potential energy and back and forth. It can go from chemical energy to whatever, and I move it around inside and change this form of energy. As long as I'm inside my system, the amount of energy doesn't change. Now, again, I know the question is going to come up. What is the system? Whatever you want it to be, right? If you have that choice. There's lot, you know... Ultimately, we can say there's a system around the entire universe. The amount of energy does not change inside the universe. We're just transferring around. That's true, but that's not particularly helpful for solving problems. So we got to, you know, we have to define what is my system. As long as we stay inside that, energy moves around. Total amount of energy doesn't change. But if I go outside my system, if I have work being done on the system, or energy being put into the system, then the, energy, the amount of energy in my system can grow. Or if I have energy coming out of the system, then the amount of energy changes. A classic example that many of you have seen is, is or at least learned about in chemistry and may not have fully understood, is adiabatic processes. What's an adiabatic process? What? Never heard, who's, never, who's never heard of adiabatic processes? Who's heard of them? A few of you. Okay. Well, <laughs> an adiabatic process, we'll learn this when we get to thermal physics, is a process where you, it's isolated in that no energy can flow out or in. A classic example is cloud formation. A chunk of air goes up. The system works in an adiabatic process because it's so large that you know the very peripheral edge energy can flow in and out but in the middle of this foreign chunk of air that's 100,000 miles you know 1,000 miles across there's no no flow of energy in from the outside no flow of energy out from the inside because it's just too big if i do work on this system though and change do some work on it Energy, you know, if I transform the energy around and do things, then I change the state of the energy. So if I actually am able to take energy out, the thermal energy of that thing must go down. doesn't matter how I took the energy out. If I took it out in forms of, if I change it from potential energy, so if I take a chunk of air and I expand it, I have done work on the system. I haven't actually put energy in. I've actually taken the the potential energy between the molecules is now greater. If I've increased the potential energy of the molecules, that increase of potential energy needs to have come from somewhere. It came from the kinetic energy of the molecules. Temperature goes down. And so this, this idea, you just think about what's, how the energy is happening, and you'll, you'll be able to tell what's happening on the inside. Since none of you have learned this in chemistry, or only one or two of you, <clears throat> we'll talk a little more about it later when we get to thermal physics. Energy goes in, I've increased the energy. 
of the system. Now, how, did, how do I visualize or how do I see this increase in energy? I'm going to see kinetic energy go up. I'm going to see potential energy change. You know, if I take energy out, I'm going to see kinetic energy go down, potential energy go down, thermal energy, you know, any number of things can change. Similar to money. We think about it like a money. Questions? Again, we can have energy transformations inside. I don't change my wealth of energy that way. It's only when I put in or out of my system. And in or out could be work or heat both directions. Could be work or heat going in, work or heat coming out. Which means so if work is coming out, that means the system is actually doing work on something else. All right. 